Hey guys, this is Fox1989 here again with another video. This one, of course, as you can see, is a physical video. Um, there's two things I want to really talk about. One is if you take a look back here, you will see an SNES and an, and an NES. Those are recent, recent acquisitions by myself. Stay. <clears throat> Recent acquisitions by myself, so those are completely legit, and I do have a hapog. So if you guys would like to see some um, <clears throat> some playthroughs on those systems, let me know. Uh, I got some games. I took a video on my phone of which SNES games I have, as well as most of my NES games, but I haven't had a chance to upload it yet. <clears throat> um, so I'll probably upload that after. What I'm actually here mostly talk about, and I'm very short on time, so I might not have a chance to go into everything, is I want to address my current thoughts on the console war. First of all, the one thing I'm severely pissed at with the console war is nobody ever mentions this thing. It's just as much competitor as anything else. And people say, well, yeah, well, we sucks. Well, remember that we was the best-selling console of the last generation. By almost double or almost added together of PS3 uh, and Xbox. So don't discount the Wii. <clears throat> okay, that out of the way because honestly, I am a Nintendo fanboy. Uh, Nintendo has always been my thing. <clears throat> but as you can see back there, I do have a PS3. One thing I have never ever owned and thought I would never ever own is an Xbox system. Because Xbox is utter and complete, total beep in my opinion. <clears throat> now, that being said, between PS4 and Xbox 360, I'm choosing, or sorry, Xbox One, I'm choosing Xbox. And I have my reasons. <clears throat> and I'm here to address some of the things I'm trying to, I'm going to be comparing both of them. Now, uh, most of my information I get from Wikipedia, so it's not 100% trustworthy. But, you know, I do, I work with what I can. So let me just bring up the Wikipedia page here. Now, when it comes to um, stats, the stats of the two systems are very, very similar. Uh, for example, they both have nearly identical CPUs. The only thing is that they are each personalized as per their system. <coughs> Oops, I want to search PS4, not PSR. Um, the only thing I can tell difference is even though they both have 8 gigs of RAM, the only thing that's different is that Sony's RAM is a slightly newer version. It's GDDR5, whereas the Xbox is using ordinary DDR3, I believe. Uh, that being said, frankly speaking, when it comes to gameplay, that's not going to be that much of a difference because anything cross-platform won't be able to take advantage of the higher RAM of the... Um, <clears throat> of the PS4 because cross systems are based on the same platform they just change the actual coding to work with each individual um, uh, software that they're going to be putting on <clears throat> now that being said the PS4 has unified RAM and although I'm not a computer genius I'm usually good with computer stuff but I'm not a computer genius unified RAM means it uses the same 8 gigs of RAM for everything it just gives what it, uh, what it needs to what it does so there's a chance that, for example, if you have an update in the background or downloads, it might get more RAM attention than your games. That's what I think. I could be wrong. So feel free to correct me if I am. The other thing, however, is that the Xbox One is devoting five of its eight gigabytes only to games. Guaranteed. This means that no matter what, no matter what you're downloading, no matter what's updating, 5 gigs of RAM is going to be dedicated to gaming. And this is good because considering that the Xbox One does so much more, you know, it has built-in Skype, it has the built-in DVR, so does PS4, um, you know, things like that, that there might be more that the Xbox is doing that might need that RAM. But they are do uh, doing it for games. Two, and this is a big one, connect. A, people say, well, why is it packed in? I don't want it. I don't use my uh, my. Uh, I've never bought a Connect. I've never used Connect. My I don't use my Connect anymore for Xbox 360. Well, first of all, <clears throat> put it this way: What good games are there for the original Connect? <laughs> There's a reason for that. It's because people, not everybody had a Connect. 
So whenever a developer would create a game that they wanted to use Kinect for, they had to design it specifically for Kinect. Look at Star Wars Kinect, for example. That being said, if everybody has a Kinect guaranteed because it's packed in in the system, that means they can start integrating it into actual gameplay. For example, let's say you're, uh, you're playing a game now. I know that the Uncharted series is unique to PS4, but let's say there's an Unchar uh, Uncharted-esque game on Xbox. So let's say your adventurer character is in a plane, and the plane is going down, and you need to pull up in order to do it. So you can actually take your controller, probably pull up, and the, the Kinect would read that. Also, um, Dead Rising 3, they are using the Kinect as a way of... Sorry, I'm just trying to avoid the glare on my glasses. They're using the Kinect as a way of... Um, you can actually shout and catch zombies' attention. So, for example, if there's someone over there, uh, over in the distance being thrown by zombies, or have zombies plotting towards them, <clears throat> you can simply shout into the Kinect, and it will catch those zombies' attention, and they'll come back to you. Also, playing games like, for example, MGS5 is going to be um, cross-platform. They might make it that if any loud noises happen in the room where your Kinect is, it may alert any enemies around you. That is really cool. So don't say, I don't want Kinect because I never used Kinect before. You don't know what they're going to be able to do now that they know everybody's going to have a Kinect. And stage two. Harry says, well, Kinect's an evil little camera. That's mandatory. The system doesn't work unless it's plugged in. Well, if you go to the um, website... And let me just go to xbox.com. Okay. So under the Xbox One tab, go to Get the Facts. Now scroll down until you get to the Get the Facts right under where the Built for the Future tab is. No, no a little further than that, sorry. Um, you'll see where it shows. The, uh, the controller and the connect, and then over you'll see either the connect or the system. I think it's the system from a rear view. It says here, easily turn the Xbox One and connect on or off. Turn off your Xbox, or to turn off your Xbox One, just say Xbox off. This puts the Xbox One into standby mode where it's only listening for the voice command Xbox on. You can also turn off your Kinect through the system settings or simply unplug it. Xbox One does not require Kinect to be plugged in for the system to function. Meaning that even if you don't want to use your Kinect, you don't have to. So stop bitching about it. Seriously. Problem two. Do you want, you want to know the fun fact about the, uh, about the PlayStation Eye? It was originally planned to be a pack-in. As far as I know, they haven't changed the price. Either that, or, either that or it was the same price as the Xbox, and they simply just lowered it due to the fact that uh, they took that out. But this is very, very clearly obvious in the fact that the controllers have that light bar in them. There's no need to have that light bar in the controller if there's no one or no eye packed in. Because it only works with the eye. It has no function other than that. Well, apparently it does also help tell you which player is which by changing the color. Um, <clears throat> so, if they didn't install that light bar and just uh, installed an LED array like they did in the uh, DualShock 3, then it would actually be cheaper to manufacture the controllers and cheaper to sell the system to begin with, giving them an even higher advantage over Xbox. You want to know why? Because the controllers are already made, manufactured, and packed in boxes. They don't want to have to recall of them just to take out the light bar. That would have been too expensive. Meaning that the light bar was guaranteed proof that the, uh, that the eye was actually packed in with the uh, PS4 to begin with. And <clears throat> they only took out the eye when they saw how unfairly people were treating the Kinect when they said it was packed in. Um, <clears throat> the next thing I want to go over is the, um, the online services and the subscription services. People are um, saying that, for example, Xbox Gold for the Xbox One is going to be absolutely horrible because you don't get any online features unless you have it. Whereas with the PS4, you'll have Netflix and Crunchyroll and Video Now and all those things that everybody says that the gaming systems shouldn't even have anyways because they're designed for gaming. 
So A, don't go back on what you just fucking said, you dumb noobs. <clears throat> okay, so put it this way. You're all hating on the Xbox because it does Netflix, because it does YouTube, because it does TV, because it does this and that and this and that, and it does everything other than play games. Now, the PS4 does all the exact same things, and you're protecting that due to the fact that you don't have to pay for them. Secondly, 99% of people who buy Xbox or PS3 are hardcore gamers. Meaning that they play COD and Battlefield because they're real men, and you have to shoot things to be real men! Okay, first of all, anybody who plays those games is going to be guaranteed to have the subscription anyways, because that's the only fucking way you're going to be able to play online on both consoles. So, if you play those games with 99% of Xbox or um, Xbox or PS3 uh, PS uh, players do, and it might not be COD, it might be Battlefield, it might be Halo, it might be whatever the hell, because frankly speaking, both of them are fa uh, both systems are based almost exclusively around shooters. Um, they're all going to have some sort of online multiplayer, and you're most likely going to end up paying for it nonetheless. So what does it matter? You still have access to all the features on both consoles because you're almost guaranteed to have this online service anyways. The only thing, the, you know, the only difference is that if you accidentally forget to reprocess your subscription for the Xbox in time, you will lose those features temporarily until you get it. But other than that, they're almost identical. They're both going to give you free games. They're both going to give you games that you keep even if you lose your subscription. The only difference is that things such as apparently Netflix and Skype and all that is not going to be available on the Xbox if you don't have the subscription. It's not that big a deal. It's like with the frickin' always-on policy. I can guarantee you that there's probably less than 20% of Xbox One owners who are not going to be able to have a solid internet connection all the time, guaranteed. And if that's, you know, if that's the case, well, just don't buy an Xbox. It's that simple. That's why you have choice. But considering they took that policy out, not a problem. Now, the other thing, people are saying, well, they did a 180 now. Who says not going to do a 180 again and put everything back in? Well, first of all, did you not read their um, <clears throat> their uh, a, a announcement of that? It says that you will now be able to trade games all the, uh, to, with anyone just the same as you would on the current Xbox or current game system anyways. And this will never change. They very clearly said that this will not change. Now, of course you say, well, they could be lying. Well, sure. But guess what? They lie, you sue. It's that simple. And they now have a legal obligation to do that. If they were to change that now without any actual reason, everybody would sue their asses, and it's not in their um, it's not in their best benefit to do that anymore. Americans are horribly, horribly untrusting, and even I, even I, as a Canadian, am a horribly, horribly untrusting person. I can't trust strangers, <clears throat> but give these guys a chance now as I said I am NOT an Xbox fanboy anyway I hate Xbox and Microsoft and everything they do related to gaming but I think that this time they've made some really good choices the only thing that they've done horribly is the PR not everybody's allowed to have perfect PR <clears throat> now the other thing is when it comes to PR as everybody says well Sony did their PR so good all they did was repeatedly slander the Xbox even if they never directly stated versus Xbox like they say that you know you'd that you would be able to trade games all the time and they really made a big thing of that they made that whole video if you remember this is how you trade on PlayStation here you go thanks remember if everybody remembers that video basically that was slander against the Xbox even though they direct, didn't directly it can't be considered slender because they never actually said this is how you do it better than Xbox or something like that. They never actually mentioned Xbox. But in a way, it's it's borderline slander, which is illegal. Well, slander is, borderline is not. Anyways, that's not good PR. That's just being an asshole. Now, a lot of their other PR is great. I'm not going to say I'm not going to say it's not. But a lot of things that people are saying that P, uh, PS4 is doing right is basically how they're just kicking Xbox while they're down. Now, on the other hand, I have to thank them for that. If they didn't, that's one. I think that's one of the things that actually helped um, the Xbox turn around on its policy. 
the fact that they're made being made fun of by other companies, not only that, but they're also being bombarded in a shitstorm of emails from, you know, their fans. And they changed. Xbox or uh, Microsoft is very famous for not just bending over backwards for their, their customers. The fact that they actually were willing to change this policy is a big step forward for Microsoft. And yes, it could be trying to catch us off guard so they can fuck us in the future. I'm not going to deny that there's that possibility. But trust them. I mean, look, look at Microsoft computers. Microsoft computers are still considered the best computers in the world. People might argue it's Macs. But everybody has a preference, right? I'm not going to hate on somebody for being a Mac user just because I'm a PC user. You know, I'm not going to hate on a PS4 user just because they chose PS4. So that being said, I think you all need to, you know, take more into consideration and stop being so blind to what you see in the media. Both systems are really good. Make your decision based on exclusives, on hardware, on personal preference. You see, I like the media aspect of the Xbox. I like not having to have 90,000 things on one shelf to do the exact same thing. You know, maybe I can turn my computer off once in a while and still talk to my friends on Skype on my Xbox. You know, frankly speaking, I'm not mad the fact that it has all these media things. Look at smartphones. Okay? Back when the iPhone and other smartphones first came out, everybody says these are useless pieces of shit that do everything that we don't need them to do. I mean, I have an MP3 player and I have a phone. Why do I need one that does both? But then guess what? Now you only have to carry one device around. It makes it so much simpler. Not only that, you have internet and email and communication and all sorts of stuff packed into one useful device. You don't have to carry around 20 different PDAs and cell phones and mp3 players and laptops and all that just to do the exact same thing with a phone canoe now anybody who doesn't have a smartphone is considered stupid for not getting with the program so why are you guys turning down this on the xbox all it's doing is following what exactly what you guys were talking about to begin with the other thing is the way i look at it Honestly, the PS4 isn't much of an upgrade over the PS3. Yeah, the graphics are a little bit nicer, the processing power is a little bit higher. But other than that, there's very few new changes to it. But if you look at the Xbox, it's completely different from the Xbox 360. It's got different menu styles, it's got, um, the controller has a lot of new things like the, the new uh, impulse triggers and stuff like that. They've made a lot of advancements over the Xbox. And then they have with the PS4 of the PS3. I like innovation. It's one of the reasons I stick with Nintendo. Nintendo is all about the innovation. You know if that means that their system is slightly inferior to the others. They don't care. They want to be out there innovating. And I can respect that. And through all these things combined, I just realized that the Xbox One is just more designed for what I want as a gamer. And that's how you guys should see it too. Look at what's going to give you the most entertainment. These are entertainment systems. So what if you're not playing games on a gaming system? I watch Netflix and Crunchyroll all the time on my PS3. It doesn't make me any less of a gamer. I still play games. So consider all the facts. Don't start complaining about certain facts on a certain console before you've decided why they might be there to begin with. Even the DRM policies were there for a reason. Because with that whole install only um, feature that they had, it would have made it so much easier to simply just, like, you can literally just have, like, four different games open and swap between them all at the same time without ever having to change discs. Now you can't do that because they had to take that feature out in order to remove the DRM. It's your fault. You just lost the simplicity of being able to do that. The only way you can do that now is if you buy everything off the um, off the store. I, would, I guarantee you that a lot of you are going to do it too. Another thing is look at this. The Xbox may only have a 500 gigabyte hard drive and it's not removable or changeable. However, it does have external support. You can attach an external to it. Now look at the PS4. 
it may have a 500 gigabyte hard drive that's changeable, upgradable, whatever, but it has no external support. I Meaning you're gonna have to basically, I'm not sure how to do it because I've never done it on my PS3, but you're gonna have to have your hard drive changed or upgraded. Whereas you could just plug in a currently existing external if that was the case. So do you want the simplicity of that or do you want the confusion of the other one? Either way, it's completely your choice. But look at everything objectively. You know, don't be hating on the Xbox simply because it doesn't do just games. Because everything that you're complaining that the Xbox does, the PS4 does as well, just not as well. So, that's my thoughts on this whole console race. No matter what, my Nintendo Wii U is probably going to be my main system. Like I said, I'm a Nintendo fanboy. I've always have been. Uh, my first system was actually a TurboGrafx-16, the one that we had in the house, and a Commodore 64 computer. But my own personal first system, the one that I actually owned with my own hands, was a 64. And I've had a GameCube, and I've had a Wii, and a Wii U. Now I've got an NES and an SNES. And they're all phenomenal systems. So, uh, although the Wii U isn't doing as good now as it could, the Wii did the same thing. But I think that once they really get some good games out there, it's really going to pick up. So take everything into consideration. I'm probably not going to own a PS4 and an Xbox simply because it's too expensive and I'm not going to want to pay over $100 a year for subscriptions in that. I don't have to pay a subscription for my Wii U. So I don't mind having that and one other system. But I think that with everything in, I'm choosing Xbox this year. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Have yourselves a good day. Fox1989 signing off.